What's up guys, Sebastian here from Walgreens Vintage. Today we'll be talking about how the height of your guitar pickups affects the tone. Before we dive into specifics, let me introduce the gear that we'll be using today. This is a Gibson Les Paul Custom Shop from 2022. It is a 58 reissue, finished in this beautiful iced tea burst color. To my left, I have a Fender American Professional 2 Stratocaster, um, finished in Miami Blue. And then as far as amps, we'll be running into this Fender Deluxe Reverb with the Aux Top Box, just to get a bit of attenuation and be able to crank the amp without the volume in the room. And then it'll just be mic'd up with an SM57 straight into the interface. It's worth mentioning that these two guitars haven't been touched setup wise. This is exactly how they get shipped to us from the factory. So it's safe to assume that the manufacturer set up these guitars to what they think sounds best and plays best. So before we start messing around with pickup heights and whatnot, we'll put the measurements down here so you guys uh, can see how these guitars are at the moment. Now, let's talk about pickup height. There's a huge world of different sounds hidden between these two screws right here. So let's talk about what happens when you lower the pickup on your guitar. The first thing you might notice is a drop in volume or gain. That's because the way pickups work, there's a magnet that is capturing the sound of the strings. And if you bring that, that magnet low, you're not capturing as much vibration. Therefore, your output drops. And several things happen when you do that. First of all, your amp, it's not hit as hard. So you're gonna notice an increase in headroom. This might be good or bad, depending on what you're looking for. So if you feel like you have a pickup that is really hot and your amp is saturating quicker than you want it to, this is a good way of increasing some of the headroom of your amplifier and getting a bit more volume and clean sound out of it. The other thing that happens when you do that, you're basically unlocking some of the, the frequencies that you have on both ends of the extreme. You get a bit more treble, a bit more bass, and your mids are gonna flatten out a little bit. Another thing that happens is that you get an increase in sustain and resonance. Now, this theory is kind of hard to prove on camera because of, well, the dynamics of how guitar resonance works. So what happens is that if you lower that magnet away from the strings, now the strings have less magnetic pull on them. Therefore, they're free to run a bit longer, so you get a bit more sustain. And there's less force that they have to fight when doing the elliptical rotation that happens when strings vibrate. Um, that, again, translates into a bit more resonant and sustained. Uh, I gotta talk about specific pickups. For example, this Les Paul has unpotted humbuckers. So what does unpotted mean? Basically, uh, a lot of pickups are dipped in wax before they get put on a guitar, and that's done to eliminate some of the squealing or microphonic qualities that typically happen with guitar pickups. However, uh, some of the early uh, PF humbuckers that Gibson built in the mid-50s were not potted. And what happens with that is that the guitar has more of a tendency uh, to feedback and to squealing, but it also has uh, more microphonic tones. Therefore, it picks up a bit more resonant off the wood. And it's something that you can actually check by simply knocking on the wood of the guitar. You can hear how uh, certain frequencies get picked up by the pickup. So what happens when you lower the pickup closer to the body is that those frequencies come alive and it picks up a bit more of that. Now again, that doesn't apply to all guitars, but specifically with unpotted humbuckers and single coils as well, uh, it's something that you might notice. What's a good way of compensating if you like the sounds of a lowered pickup, but you wanna have the same output level that you had before? Well, you can always reach for a boost pedal or just crank up the volume of your amp. <laughs>
Now on the other hand, by raising the height of your pickup, you might find some very interesting effects there too. For example, let's look at this Fender Stratocaster. You can see here the way Fender set up uh, the guitar from the factory, the treble side is higher than the bass side. And this is no coincidence, they actually do this for sonic purposes. So when you raise the treble side, it creates the opposite effect of what we mentioned earlier. Instead of uh, cutting down on mids, you're actually cutting bass and highs and adding a bit more output and mids, which is what you want for the treble side of a guitar with single coils. So you eliminate some of the harshness and get a bit more volume. The opposite happens on the bass side. By lowering the pickup, you're actually introducing more of a scooped sound and reducing the volume that uh, typically comes uh, on lower strings, which tends to be higher than the, the high strings. So you're getting a more balanced, even tone. Another thing that you might feel that changes when you uh, increase the height of your pickup is that you're getting a bit more volume out of that pickup. So for example, if you have a guitar like this one that has single coils, but want to drive your amp a little bit harder, instead of using a pedal or just raising the volume of your amp, actually raising the height of the pickup itself might actually give you a slight boost so you can drive your amp a little harder. Also go too far and raise the height too much. This can create some issues such as a loss in sustain, uh, your guitar might feel a little bit more dead, but the one thing that you have to watch out for is for tuning stability. When you really raise your pickups, that extra magnet pull messes around with your intonation. So if you ever see the tuner bouncing around instead of really being dead center, then you should consider maybe lowering your pickups and see if that's the cause of that uh, problem. <laughs> Now on the other hand, if you have a guitar that has uh, two pickups or more, a lot of times you might find that there's an imbalance between those two pickups. You can also use it almost as like a two channel setup. So if you typically use your neck pickup for rhythm, you can actually lower the, you know, the height of that pickup to get even more of a scoop sound and something that sits better in the mix. And then for leads, if you raise your bridge pickup, you can flip it over and get a bit more output and a bit more gain, something that fits better uh, those lids. None of these tips are written in stone, so we encourage you to experiment and see if you can find some cool sounds that you might like. At the end of the day, the only right thing is what works for you. So experiment with it, see if you like it. Let us know in the comment section down below if you found any cool sounds that were new to you and what you think about some of these tips. <laughs> All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna pick up any of the gear used here, the links will be down below in the description. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. For more information, visit our website, waltgracevintage.com. And if you enjoyed this type of content, follow us on Instagram at, at @waltgracevintage. My name is Sebastian, Till next time. <laughs>